Alright guys, my name is Miles. And my name is Fez. And this is The Commodity, and today we're reacting to 10 Australian things America doesn't even have a word for. America, American living in Australia. This video was requested to us by T-Girl. Thank you so much, T-Girl, and thank you again for the snacks that you sent us yesterday. Thank you so much, it is delicious. Well, minus today. the yeah, he, technically today. Yeah, he didn't like the uh, the mint, the mintiness of if some of the snacks. If you want to enjoy me cringing. Yeah, guys, if y'all want to see that video after this, go check it out or go check it out before and hop back into this. Um, I'm excited to check this out. I know we've we've learned a lot of Australian language uh, lately, but I'd like to know what the 10 things are that you guys don't have words for. Obviously, this is coming from American, so I would Everybody's imagine... Versa, 10 things that we don't have words for that they that, have. That you guys have. This is coming from an, an American living in Australia, so I would imagine she's pretty accurate at what she thinks we don't have words for. Um, but guys, before we hop into this video, if you would, go ahead and give us a thumbs up. It truly helps us out in getting these videos out to more people. Also, if you would, go ahead and click that subscribe button and the bell notification icon. That way you guys can stay informed on our future videos. And if you'd like to help support the channel even more and get an exclusive YouTube short exclusive, shout out. Exclusive, exclusive, exclusive. That's right. <laughs> click the join button down below. So let's hop in. G'day guys, welcome back to the channel. My name's Caitlin and I'm an American learning to live down under here in beautiful Sydney, Australia. She's not from the South. No. I've been living in Australia for several months now. I've been dating an Aussie for several years. And there She's are just some words that are Australian that do not translate to most Americans when they first hear it. Even though most American words are known to Aussies through things like the media, through social media, through Hollywood, movies, and so many other things, there are a lot of Australian words that Americans just don't know. So today I'm breaking down oh, some of that language barrier and sharing different. 10 Australian words. What? Australian words that we don't know. Words that oh, we'll Americans just don't know. Kind Australian, learning to live down under. The first word is roundabout, and if you drive anywhere in Australia, you are probably going to see these. Okay, maybe not so much if you're driving around in the outback or really far out in the bush, but if you are within any of the cities in Australia, you are going to come across a roundabout. That's a very this common... This video was posted in May, May 1st. That's a very... We common yeah we have thing. roundabouts yeah i While drove through two today some of these over in the states they're not common and most people in the states probably wouldn't really know how to react if they had to drive around one i will say we didn't have any in mississippi where i lived oh we didn't have any in uh no we did have them in tennessee i, I, I can them. i can remember one anywhere near where i lived and i had no idea what to do when i came up to it so to be fair, you know, there are probably some places in the United States where they have no idea what it is. But like I That's said, fair. I drove through two today. Um, but if you live in a large city. They're, yeah, and they're becoming more more common. Yeah. The and they look better. The states in the U.S. have different so road rules. A lot if of it's places in a nice area, have jug handle turns. Some of them just have typical four-way stop signs or four-way traffic lights. But over here in Australia, something that is pretty unique, at least from an American's perspective, is that there are roundabouts in the road. And so far, I've seen roundabouts for anything like a three-way street, even up to a six-way road. That would be and intense. these aren't just small little roundabouts that you'll see in corners. You will see these going onto motorways, even coming in and out of some parking lots. Roundabouts are something that are very common over here in Australia. And the first time, even though I was just a passenger, the first time I had to go through some of these, it's... If you're on the most inside lane of a six-way roundabout... You're fucked. You're not getting out of the bout. No. It's a little you're just around. <laughs> not only the first couple times you're in a car, you're also on the other side of the road, but you're also seeing these circles, and you have no idea how people really know when to go in, when to go out, when to put your turn signal on, just like when yielding. to jump in, how right. to make sure that somebody isn't going to cut in front of you. And what if these roundabouts have two lanes in them? There is so much to these that when you first Most see roundabouts these, they have almost two blow lanes. your mind mm -hmm. as an American over here in Australia. And even on the yielding part, like in Mississippi, uh, going onto the highway, the the oncoming ramp has to yield to the highway. Yeah. No, like here, the highway, like if you're in the right lane on the highway, you're supposed to yield to the people coming onto the highway. I don't think highway. technically that's true. I don't think that's accurate. Because there would be a sign. No, there is the yield sign. No. Mm -hmm. Oh, if you're getting off the highway, yes. 
like people on the side road have to yield to the people getting off? Getting off, yeah. I'm pretty certain there's a yield for people getting on as well. But in Mississippi... You're asking people to go from 75 to 30. Or get over. Or get over. But sometimes you can't get over. Because then you're asking people to go from 30 to 75. No, no. The on-ramp is yields to the highway. Oh. Okay. Because you're going so much faster. So learning how yeah. to use roundabouts is something that is very different over Slam here in Australia. Brakes. Roundabouts just aren't common in the States. So most of the time, if you say roundabout, okay. a lot of Americans just won't know what you're talking about. We it's something that, that I've only come across over here in Australia. At least the name. As an American, I'm very familiar with these are Dagwood dogs. So Dagwood dogs nope. are what we call corn dogs over yes. in the States. A typical hot dog covered in a cornmeal batter, deep fried. You'll find them at carnivals, corn fairs. Meal. The first time. I she sounds kind of Australian though. She says deep fried, and like, like fried. I actually deep. saw one was at the Royal Easter Show this year which is almost like a massive fair and carnival over here in Sydney for any Americans who are watching and have no idea what I'm talking about. Talking. I think even if you don't live in Sydney, a lot of Aussies still know what the Royal Sydney Easter Show is. But even though we have pretty much the same food over in the States, they're not called corn dogs over here in Australia. They are called Dagwood dogs. Dagwood that is a little dogs. ironic that hmm. corn dogs are an American food, but they're called Dagwood dogs over here, which actually comes from the American cartoon strip Blondie. Oh, the corn Dagwood, dogs were actually yeah. made in the States back in 1947 at the Minnesota State Fair, although there are debates that it actually started at the Texas State Fair back in the 1930s. So we'll we say that's foods. true. Yeah, I would say that's probably true. Because that's actually, like, when you go to the State Fair of Texas... The Texas State That's Fair, where a lot of foods come you from. You have <laughs> to have a corn dog because they're, I forgot what company does them, but they are the It's Fletcher's, best. right? Fletcher's. Yeah, Fletcher's corn dogs. It is hands down the best corn dog you will ever have. And people will travel like far. Well, to be fair, the Texas State Fair is the most popular fair in the entire country. And people travel in from out of country just to go to the state but fair. But some of them come just for the... Corn dogs. Yeah, the corn dogs are phenomenal. Whatever the origin story really is, they were an American food. So the fact that they're called Dagwood dogs based off of an American comic strip over here in Australia is, I guess, a little ironic. Remember that song, Ironic? Remember that one? Isn't it ironic? No, Don't you think? You would think Dagwood dog would have something to do with, like, Australian pop culture, but in this case, Day. no, still American. Now, of course, we couldn't talk about Australian words without putting this on here, and that is Outback. Yes, if you say Outback, Outback. most Americans automatically think of Australia. Steakhouse they also might is automatically what I think of. think of Outback Steakhouse because yes. there are so many of those commercials over in the States. It's insane. Yeah. Hurry into Outback, mate. For just $9.99, get a mouth-watering Outback signature sirloin. Plus you know, their sirloins are actually kind of trash. They don't even sell they're, ribeyes. No, they're, they're, their food is terrible yeah their food's trash they're from like indiana or something yeah like if you're gonna if you're gonna eat like a steak at a place like the like a chain like this you got to go to roadhouse but roadhouse but they don't even offer a ribeye it's only sirloins and their sirloins are not tender it looks so cheap yeah, well, it's only nine dollars But when you talk about the Outback, a lot of Americans don't really know what it is. They seem to think that the Outback is, like, down under. It's just another nickname for all of Australia. That's what so I think. So most Aussies know thought. where no, the bad. Outback is. I mean, it's kind of that center of desert-ish the... area. Oh, right, right. But the way I learned it and the way I kind of remembered it is you have the cities, and outside of the cities, you have the suburbs. Outside of the suburbs, you the have bush. the bush. And out back of the bush is the Outback. If that's it's wrong, let me know down below because honestly, I don't know where the borders of the outback are specifically. But when you talk about when you the feel outback like you're over fucked. in America, they do know that you're referencing <laughs> because you're too far out. Australia, that's near the outback. But a lot of Americans typically think of the outback as just another nickname for Australia. They don't know it's actually a particular area of Australia. So one word that Americans will have no idea what you're talking about is schnitty, and schnitty is nope. short for schnitzel, nope. which is a German word. So if you start talking about a schnitty roll, Americans are going to be very, very confused about what it is you're talking about. That's a about. shitty roll. Even that though a schnitzel like... or schnitty over here is just... That looks you know, delicious. I'll be honest. I don't even know what a schnitzel is. I don't I heard either. the word. I, I I was thinking more of like a funnel cake. I was head. too, but she just said schnitzel roll, and I'm looking at like a, a chicken. It looks like a chicken fried steak or yeah. chicken fried chicken or whatever just known as a very flattened out piece of chicken covered in some oh, type so of it's bread a chicken and fried chicken. often fried, sometimes baked depending on where you get it. 
Yeah, I don't know why we call it that, but we call it chicken fried chicken. Yeah. And if it's a steak, then it's chicken fried steak, yeah. which is dumb. Yeah. I mean, it, it, nobody cares. I mean, it's just a food. Yeah, I mean, they just say it. But it thinking is, about it, it, it is it's weird really if stupid. you really break it down. Yeah, chicken fried <laughs> Can steak. Can I get some of that chicken fried chicken? Or that chicken it's fried steak. It's the base steak. for schnitty rolls, the base for a chicken parma. It's the base for a lot of really common, especially pub foods that you will see over here in Australia. And when Americans think of Aussie foods, typically they might think of Vegemite, of Tim Tams, of kangaroo skewers. So I, I really want to try kangaroo. They might be thinking of different types of Arnott's biscuits. They might be thinking about fairy Arnitz. bread. They might be thinking about meat pies. Arnitz. But often, schnitty is not something that comes Arnitz. to mind for most Americans. So this is definitely an Aussie word that most Americans would not know. Guys, let us know in the comments if you want us to order some kangaroo. I'd be down. Let us know if you want to or if you want us to order some kangaroo and eat it because we have I've found a website that I can order some from. Is it expensive? Not too expensive. Number five, while we're on the topic of food, is Vegemite. Of course, there is no other kind of word for Nobody Vegemite over in America know what because there's no other thing like Vegemite in America. It's a brand. Vegemite is not a word; it's a product. Yeah, that is a cow. yeah. There are some other sort of not quite. So not they don't have a word for Oreos in Australia like except for Oreos. Yeah, losers. You won't find spreads like this over in the U.S. or at least not in your common everyday grocery store. So to be fair, okay, there's no Vegemite yeah. in America. So yes, nobody in America, unless they've seen the videos or has an Aussie friend or something like that, they're not going to know what Vegemite is. I didn't. You've seen the videos, so you did. I mean, but I knew what Vegemite was before that because it's so popular. Like, I I had no idea. Like, it's up until the point where it's we so ubiquitous to it. with Australia that I kind of already knew about it. I knew it was supposedly gross and blah blah blah. Which we salty. then learned that people it's in America people just are, ate it like yeah. idiots. Now, did I know how to eat it properly? No. Did I know how to do this or that with it? No. Right. We thought you guys just shoved spoonfuls in your mouth. Yeah, right up, have to go to right a specialty food shop in order to get some type of yeast spread or vegetable-ish kind of spread. But you're not going to find anything like Vegemite no. at all over in the States. No. Most spreads over in the States are typically either very sweet spreads, like mm -hmm. you find Nutella and jams and jellies, things like that. And as far as savory spreads go, you might find relishes, you might find salsa, you might find different types of mustard spreads and different kinds of hot sauces. Or but butter. you won't find anything like a yeast spread, which is what so Vegemite is over in the States. Butter. Next up, obviously, I really need to have lunch because I must be starving because I keep coming up with food things. And that is lamingtons. Lamingtons are not something you will see over in the I States. I thought it was lemmington. I've only seen them in one place no, ever lamingtons. in the States, and that was in an Aussie-style well, cafe me... where they had Vegemite toast, they American. had smashed avo, and they sold lamingtons. And normally they Don't have those have cute... those in Britain as well, in England? I'm not quite sure. I didn't know what they were until we in started Britain. talking about Australia. I'm pretty... I, I could be wrong because I'm pretty sure I've tried those in England. I mean, Lamington sounds British. British. Yeah. I don't know. Cute little Australian I could be wrong. toothpicks on them with a the little Aussie flag, which is just really, really cute. But Lamingtons are not something that you are going to see over in the States. Here, you can go to a Woolies or a Coles or IGA and pick up packs of Lamingtons. Coles? You can go to the bakery and like see that. them. Some clothing store. Clothes store and, and some see them. They are all snacks. over cafes across Australia. But in the States, they are impossible to find. You cannot find lamingtons anywhere. You might, might be lucky enough to find an Aussie bakery that sells them. But typically, if you want lamingtons in the States and you actually know what they are, you're going to I have really to want to know where she's from. Mm -hmm. Lamingtons are something that most Americans America. just would not know. Now, this one scares me. I haven't been in Australia in the spring yet. And I thought it was kind of similar to drop bears where it was just Aussies pulling your leg, having a joke. But magpie swooping is oh, not yeah. something that most Americans We wouldn't would have, have known this had it not been for videos right. we've watched. Yeah, and that shit's intense. Yeah, and that's literally what I like. I read in a comment today, like, they're like, venomous animals? Don't bother me. Magpies? Fuck them. <laughs> I have not yet experienced this firsthand. I'm hoping that I never do. And I really hope this isn't like drop bears where it's just kind of a joke, but I've seen enough articles online that I really don't think it is. 
we've that seen the videos. Swooping happens yeah. over here in Australia in the spring, where birds will literally swoop at your head and try to attack you. As That's far as I know, there are no birds that tool. swoop at you like this over in the States. Come at me. Or if they are, they aren't spread countrywide. Because it seems no. like magpies well, are something that all of Australia is afraid of. They're not stuck in one localized area. It's not like you're only going to, to be find fair, magpies around. The majority of Australians live in one localized yeah. area. Sydney <laughs> or Melbourne are farther up the coast or anywhere up north. From the sounds of it, magpies are everywhere over here in Australia which is really, really worrying for when spring comes. And I've also seen a lot of magpies in my neighborhood, so now I'm a little bit worried about how that's going to turn out in a couple months when spring hits. So magpie swooping is definitely something most Americans would have no idea what no, you're talking I about. I agree. Mm -mm. So magpie oh, swooping is definitely something Americans don't have a word for. Well, when I heard magpies originally, I thought that it was actually like a type of pie yeah me too 100 percent. it still sounds like a good pie yeah. live in australia i think most aussies at least know what this is but not a lot of aussies have to worry about this it depends on the area where you're at and that is red belly black red belly blacks are one of those venomous species of snakes so it's red beautiful. belly black snakes are something you will find along the east coast of australia you're not going to find them in tasmania or along western australia or the northern territory well, we just got water moccasins well, we also have and copper copperheads and rattlesnakes. <laughs> I think that's pretty. Much. Those are the three major, like. I mean, there's some ones other there, ones, yeah. but they're not common. Right. Like you can find a route. You could literally walk through a field just to look for a rattlesnake, and you yeah. run into one. I'm sure they have them in Australia too. Oh yeah, at least some type of rattle. They have everything deadly. Yeah. So. And although red belly blacks are venomous, they haven't been noted to kill anybody over here in Australia. However, they can make you incredibly ill. So when you say red belly black, most Americans are going to I don't to want to go no to work go find a red belly black. Until you mention that it is a kind of snake, and then they are immediately going to jump to the conclusion that it's a venomous snake that can kill you with one bite. Because most Americans think every snake in Australia can kill you. Which, I think every snake honest, in America <laughs> can kill you. It could be a baby garden snake. I'm like, nope, if you don't, don't trust it. Deadly. Snakes is probably just a safe assumption to assume that everything can kill you because then you don't have to worry. Luckily, I mean, you'll worry 100% of the time. Around here yet, and I'm hoping I never do. So, red belly black is There's already not snakes coming that... out at my apartment. Are there? Yeah, there's been a few posts on our uh, Facebook page that pictures of snakes, like in the grass. And we live, stuff. well, you live closer to the water than I do, but we both live off the lake just in two different places. And over at his place, there's always tons of spiders because they get all the, the bugs from the, the lake. Yeah. And then. I guess snakes live near water, beyond the water moccasin. Yeah. I, I don't know much about snakes, to be fair. would imagine it's just like people. They want to migrate closer to the water. That is weird. Yeah. That Americans are going Trey. to know if you mention it to yeah. them. And it's just something that Americans don't have a word for. Just like lorikeets. Uh, while there mm. are a huge variety parakeets. of birds over in the U.S., uh, there are no lorikeets are over in the U.S. They're not indigenous. indigenous. I understand uh, that, but we have them. We have to go to a Petco. store to get one. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, these we are things that, like, that beautiful. These aren't things we don't have words for. We just don't have these. Yeah, so there's no need to <laughs> have a we word for We don't have to have the word. Yeah, it's yes. like we... Living where I am over parakeet. in Western Sydney, I do see rainbow lorikeets all the time. They are absolutely beautiful birds. But yeah, if I, talk I almost about hit a lorikeets, robin today. Most Americans have absolutely yeah. no idea what I'm talking about, and I have to it's tell them that it is a type of bird native to Australia. And then when I send the pictures, they are in shock at just how beautiful these creatures are. I'm telling you, the birds over here in Australia are absolutely amazing. And seeing rainbow lorikeets in the gum trees, especially whenever I'm walking around in my neighborhood, is just incredible. But most Americans don't know what a lorikeet is, so if you mention it to them, you're going to have to say it's kind of similar to a parrot in that it is very bright, it's very colorful, it's a small bird, very brightly colored bird, absolutely beautiful. I think I've said the word beautiful. Talking That's like saying time. you guys don't have a name for this specific knife because I call it my knife. I mean, that's not a good analogy. It's that's a good a horrible analogy. horrible analogy. No, it's a great analogy. That's like us saying um, right-hand turns on red. They don't have right-hand turns on red. Yeah, but they think that's stupid anyway. Terrible analogy. 
Um, um shit. Uh, what do rifles. we only? So what do we only have here? <laughs> AR-15s. <laughs> School shooting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We call that's like them saying you guys don't know what to call a school shooting because <laughs> y'all don't have them. Losers. <laughs> it's like your children years. survive yeah. the school year. Most Americans just don't know what a lorikeet is. And now the last one, number we 10, bringing the last yeah, bit of wild obviously. into this, and that is bogan. Most Americans have no idea what a again bogan a is. word I would have never They've known. Never yeah, had I not watched the really videos. Understand what it is. And when most Aussies try to explain it, it seems like they just say it's the Australian version of an American redneck. But at the same time, I've also seen other layers to it as well. Some people just assume that it's somebody who is a redneck. So bogans seem to be associated mostly with slightly lower class or slightly uneducated people over oh, here in rednecks. Australia. It's mm -hmm. not just rednecks. That's well, rednecks. There are some similarities <laughs> that you can kind of joke about in the stereotypes. Mullet wearing, cheap redneck, beer drinking, redneck, flip redneck, flop, redneck, thong wearing, redneck, fairly uneducated, <laughs> very redneck, redneck, works a blue collar job, redneck, they don't just live off of the government, redneck, the stereotypes behind bogans and rednecks that yes, they can be similar, but bogans over here in Australia seem to have a little bit more layers to it. It's not just people who fall into these stereotypes, but a lot of people will call somebody bogan if they're just poor, if they're undereducated if they work a blue-collar job, even if they're neck. pretty intelligent or and trash. Well -spoken Trailer person. trash. To be, I mean, to I be fair, like, like we're not rich. No, you know? God, no. Uh, but but if somebody comes off, like, so I was I was actually talking to my ex-wife the other day that I was like uh, somebody that is well, like I met someone today trash. that just came off just really trashy. Yeah. 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 No, yeah. but and I was talking to my mom. I was like, look, because I was talking about just trashy people or rednecks. I think I use the word like just trashy people uh, tend to live in lower income places. And then I was like, I've made it very clear that just because you live in a low income or you're, you are low income. Doesn't mean you're trash. Doesn't mean that you are qualified to be that same person. It's really just the way you carry yourself. Or how you take care of everything around you. Or people. Like a redneck is or the kind children. of person that has like five cars in the front yard and probably a toilet in the front yard as well. And, and then, no house. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And just trashy, trashy, horrible person. That's white trash. That's hillbilly. That's redneck. Whereas on this side, he's just low income. Nothing's yeah. wrong with it. Nothing makes him. He might be the hardest working dude on the planet. And when I say I met somebody trashy today, he, I mean, he makes money. Has, he, he has a decent income. He just carries himself really trashy. Yeah. And so, yeah, no, I, you're exactly right. It doesn't and really mean. I don't feel bad saying that. So don't call me out in the comments. Call everybody. Out. Who cares? Uh, I was in a trashy situation. Like bogan is a word that gets thrown around a lot more over here in Australia than redneck does over in the states. So to be honest, even Depends though there are at. some similarities, yeah. hearing people Fucking say things rednecks. like bogan over here is a lot more common than hearing redneck over in the states. And even though in some ways they are kind of similar, bogan is just not a word that most Americans know. And when you say it's kind of similar to rednecks, most Americans get it. But when they hear these extra layers to it with Ozzy's talking, that there's so much more to bogans than I'm just sure like the stereotypical is. redneck traits. It does kind of confuse Americans because a redneck is a very tightened stereotypical definition, whereas bogan seems very broad over here in Australia. So I bet you bogan is similar to our trash. Bogan Probably. just bogan, I guess because we don't hear it or say it, bogan just sounds a lot nicer. It does sound bad. It sounds way better than trash sounds very trash. demeaning, you know, but, but it's because we know the definition, right? Because I mean, even like if I, if I try to snack and I didn't like it and you're just joking around with your friends, you'll say, oh, that's trash. Yeah. Uh, or if you see a piece of paper outside, you're like, Hey, there's some trash, physical trash, but then there's people trash, literal, literal. Well, it's physical as well. But there's also trashy people. That's physical. 
and liberal. No, trash is stuff that goes into the garbage. Well, it would also be a piece of physical trash. I think you're just comparing <laughs> a human to <laughs> what you're throwing in the waste basket. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just trying to pick out what you're saying. I, it doesn't matter. Like, no, you're absolutely right. There is a very different. What we're just saying is... There's a broad spe spectrum of what trash could be considered. But that's just here. here. I mean, that could be state by state. Like, that's the one thing that's very, probably very different than Australia. Even though I know y'all have different states and stuff. But terminology, accents, verbiage as a whole, um, people, personalities are vastly different from one place to another. Yeah. Even within Texas. Of course, Texas is the size of most countries right because well, a houstonian somebody from houston from the armpit of texas is vastly different than somebody from san antonio and different than austin and different from uh, dallas right the individual though that i i said i found to be trash today would be trash in anybody's scenario sense of trash yeah. um piece of shit would be the first terrible one. human being loser <laughs> there's a lot of good words yeah we won't go into detail but he was trash. But yeah. I hope thousands to billions and millions of people see this video. Too bad you can't throw him out there. I'm not gonna. Throw I'm, I'm the not bus. that type of person. Yeah. But you're trash if you see this video. You won't. I know. Unless I share it on Facebook. <laughs> Please don't. <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> but anyways, guys, I hope y'all enjoyed this video. If you did, hit that like button. It helps us get it out to more people. If you want to see our future videos, hit the subscribe button and the bell notification. And if you want to support us directly, hit that join button. With that being said, my name is Miles. My name is Fez. Thanks for watching, mates. Peace out.